channel where I talked about getting into pharmaceutical sales. That video is years old. It's probably like at least three to four years old. And to this day, I still get questions, emails, inboxes, all that asking me about pharmaceutical sales, what my experience was, what exactly the job is. And I figured today it would be a great opportunity to just kind of tell you guys about pharmaceutical sales, the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> Last night I was sitting and telling Brian about my experiences and I was also chatting with someone on Instagram in the DMs and we were talking about pharma. I was telling Brian my stories and all the fun times I had in the industry. So I figured you guys, even those of you who aren't interested in going into pharmaceutical sales, you may find something interesting from this story. So we're gonna do some makeup. I'm gonna tell you guys about my background and my experiences and hopefully this is helpful in some way, shape or form. I am going to also try to put the items I use to do my face like somewhere up here or up here so you guys can follow along. But I don't think I'll give too many instructions on what I'm doing as I want us to focus on the conversation. So for those of you who didn't know, I used to work in pharmaceutical sales years ago. I was a pharma rep or a drug rep as some would call it. And I worked for Pfizer Pharmaceuticals and I also worked for Sharing Plow Pharmaceuticals. I was in the industry for probably Probably a number of years like I think it was like five or six years I want to say and I was first at Pfizer I used to work in the Grand Rapids territory and then I left the organization after one of my friends left and I went to sharing plow to go work there in Lansing so that I didn't have to commute anymore. Cause for those of you guys who know I'm a Michigan State girl, I used to live in Lansing, Michigan before I went back to school to get my MBA. So I did that job for a long time. I have a lot of experience in pharma and it was probably one of the best jobs I think I've ever had with the exception of my current job. I do love my current job right now. So I did pharma, I sold a number of products. I sold Celebrex. I sold Bextra, I sold Aricept, Geodon. I also launched the first inhaled insulin. It was called Exubra. That was very, very interesting. It was on the market and then it actually ended up leaving the market shortly after we launched it. So that one was kind of a bust. But I enjoyed the career, the whole industry. It was, it was a lot of fun, learned a lot. And I think that's honestly where I get a lot of my presentation skills and just the experience that has helped me to be a better presenter to this day. So with that, I went to Pfizer. Pfizer was my first job, like I said. I started there a couple years after B-School. I used to work in radio sales first. So I did a job in radio sales for like 10 months. And then after I finished that job or after I left there, I went to Pfizer and we had to go to training for weeks. It was like 12 weeks, I wanna say. So you had basically three months of training. The first two weeks you were at the regional office, then you went home for the weekend. Then you went to New York or New Jersey, I think it might've been and you spent time in New Jersey and went through the training program, which was so amazing. So let me tell you guys about this whole training program because it was so amazing. It was a great experience. The place was dope. The food was good and the people were just so cool. Like a lot of the people I met in that training, I still keep up with to this day. It was one of the literally best experiences of my life with the exception of going back to school to get my MBA. So we went to the training and the training was in this beautiful facility. The facility was on a golf course. I don't know if they still have this facility to this day, but it sat on a golf course, which made it a beautiful sight to see when you look out the windows. You could see the golf course, you could see the people out there. And then the actual training facility was amazing. They had just, it was like, I believe it was two floors if I'm not mistaken. The rooms were huge. It was like college, literally like college. But the other thing that was super eye-opening about Pfizer, now sharing was not this way, but Pfizer was definitely this way, is all of the people, like all of the people were so beautiful. When I tell you guys, we used to joke that there had to be a box on everyone's resume where they check to say, are these people attractive, yes or no? Because literally, you guys, I'm not exaggerating, everyone was so young and very, very attractive. So that was the first thing I was like blown away by with training. I actually, one of my good friends, his name is Sean, I met him. We were both married at the time and I think we ended up becoming really good friends because of everybody there. Most people there were single, so they were all having their a good old time. I met Sean, I met my friend Maya, who I ended up getting, being able to be a roommate with. We were roommates for a little while. 
when we first got there, you had like a random roommate. And then Maya and I asked if we could roommate, be roommates together. And then we ended up getting our own rooms over time. I think as the hotel started to lighten up a little bit, they let us have our own room, so that was nice. But overall, when I tell you guys the experience was so amazing, you go through the training to learn how to detail doctors or physicians or nursing staff, and they teach you all the fundamentals. And when I say detail, basically what that means is you walk through the product, the disease state, and you give them a short rundown of what it is they need to remember. It's almost like a walking commercial. You know, you walk up to the doctor, you detail them, you give them a short commercial about the product, and then in exchange, for that they typically get samples or something like that now back when I was a drug rep we used to be able to give little giveaways or like pens paper stuff like that anything the company made we would be able to give that stuff away we also could give samples which you would give samples the doctor would sign for those samples and then you would log it in that you gave them those samples and you would detail them in exchange and that was really cool I know a lot of people who have been interested in this didn't really like understand the process, but I wanted to make sure to explain that part because that is why when you're in the training, they have to teach you so much. You have to learn the disease state, you have to learn the product, you have to learn how to detail the product, okay? So we went through that and it was amazing. Like you learn so much about interacting with different personality styles. You learn about how to talk to people, some of the smartest people out that you will interact with and explain to them very complex diseases, how to treat products. You have to learn multiple products within a disease state that are available. Like it's an overwhelming experience, but it is so amazing. Like overall, I always felt like it was pretty cool to learn about things that these physicians are using on a daily basis and be the one who was educating them by learning the new clinical trials, by sharing the clinical data that is out and available on the market, by understanding the competitive landscape. Like that was so cool to me. I also am driven by competition. I have this fire in me when it comes to competing and not the like unhealthy competition, but the, but the healthy competition, okay? So we went through that. You also had to take tests. That was crazy. At Pfizer, you had to get an 80% or higher to be able to pass the test. And when I went to Sharing Plow, you had to get a 90% or higher. They would say at Pfizer that if you didn't pass the test, they would send you home. But I never saw anyone while I was there go home. But at Shearing Plow, we did see people go home. People who hired in would take the test and not get over 90% and then they would go home. And that was so sad. To see people come, come to training, be excited about starting a new job, not pass the training and have to go home is so devastating. So you definitely had to be on your A game. You had to definitely be about that life and focus, but at the same time, you could still enjoy yourself too and your friends and everybody you're getting to know. Now at Pfizer, you guys, one other thing they did with us is they put us through this personality training. At the time, the one we did was called DISC, but there's a lot of different personality trainings out there. And you would learn about your personality style. You actually also would take a test to know what you scored as. So I scored as an I at the time. I was an I and then an S. Eyes typically are extroverted, get energized by other people, as well as S's, the way they, the one thing I remember about S's, cause I'm kinda now drawing a blank on like all the descriptive characteristics about S's, but my understanding is you don't like to rock the boat, and those were like the two things that just kinda stuck out with me. I will say though, we've done similar training at my current job, and my personality is totally different than it used to be. But anyway, back to the story. So Pfizer was a great experience, you guys. Like coming in, especially being somebody who was younger and just learning the corporate experience as a whole, I really feel like it helped me to become more polished, especially being so young and coming out of undergrad and coming into the corporate world and not really having any experience prior to that in that environment. So I loved it. It was definitely, like I mentioned earlier, one of the best experience, experiences of my life. And I'm not sure what that whole process looks like now to this day, but I will say you guys, if they're doing training, anything like they did back then, it was an amazing experience. If you are thinking about going into pharmaceutical sales or you've taken a job, the training is great. You are not gonna feel disappointed by the training for sure. So I do kinda wanna talk about the job and just give you guys a little bit of background about the job and what it's like to be a drug rep, what all you do, 
Did I enjoy it? Why I ended up leaving and going back to school? Because I feel like this is important. I know a lot of people look at this job and they think this is so cool, it's amazing, you make good money, you get the free car. And there are a lot of perks with pharmaceutical sales depending on what type of role you accept. However, there's a lot to still think about in terms of being fulfilled, in terms of longevity in the industry and things of that nature. So I, like I said, I started at Pfizer. I was in Grand Rapids. I had about an hour commute to work when I would go into my territory. And then once I got into my territory, I just kind of did my thing. In the role, you would typically call on eight to 10 physicians a day, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on how the day went. But your average would typically be somewhere like eight to 10. And it was really, really cool because if you're like me, I love people, I love interacting with new people, and I love when my days are different, where every single day is a different day. And that is the part about the role I definitely love the most. Also, you got to carry your pharmaceuticals. You typically would have a storage unit where you'd put all your pharmaceuticals. You also would keep your literature and any of your giveaways, and all that stuff would be inside of your your locker or your storage unit. I used to keep a really small storage unit, it was like five by five. Some people would keep that stuff in their house, but you had to have it in a place that was totally locked up where no one could gain access to it. So for me, I just felt like it was easier to keep that stuff at a storage unit, somewhere secure and safe that I didn't have to worry about it. But the day was real easy, you guys. You'd get up in the morning, you'd head out to the field, and you'd start calling on your doctors and just interacting with the nursing staff and all that. So the days were very easy to me just because I love people. I love interacting with new people too, and I feel like I am able to fit in really well in that, that environment. And even being on your toes, because sometimes people will try to come for you, and you have to be prepared for that because everybody is not excited about salespeople coming into their establishment, especially when they're coming in in exchange for something else and it's just kind of a part of the beast. Like not everybody likes that culture, likes that the way that this works. So y'all, I did want to also tell you about my experience with launching products. I was in the industry long enough where I had the ability to launch two products. I launched Exubra and I also launched Lyrica. Now Lyrica is still on the market. Exubra is not, okay? And Lyrica was indicated for post neuropathic pain and Exubra was the first inhaled insulin. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, inhaled insulin sounds kind of spooky. And that's most likely the reason it didn't last on the market because it was just one of those things where people just couldn't really get their head around inhaled insulin. And I also, if I'm not mistaken, they may have had some adverse um, clinical trials that ended up coming out later. So that product did not stay on the market, but Lyrica is still on the market to this day. And when I see commercials, I'm always like, wow, that's so cool. <laughs> like I used to sell that. One thing I did wanna tell you guys about though is I did have a chance to launch the two products and product launches are probably the best experience you can have when being in pharmaceutical sales. The reason I say that is because when you go to a product launch, you get a crash course in a new disease state as well as the product that you're going to be selling and all of the other products available in that market space. It is so cool. You get to meet all of the other drug reps from around the country that sell the same products as you. It's just a fun experience. Experiences like that make me excited. I'm always geeked because it's just the number of people that are there, the activities that they have, and I'm telling you guys, it was so amazing. So these product launches are dope, you guys, because there's 3,000 people there. We're all from all over the world, all over the country, you know, multiple countries represented. We're all there with the same mission and you get to meet people you don't know. We had flags, so I think we brought a Michigan State flag so that we could wave our flag and everybody would know where we were because you had to get your seats and all that good stuff. So it was just a ton of fun. We also, I want to say on the last day, they threw a huge party. And when you go into the party, the party looks like a huge wedding. Like it's crazy. They have a huge tent and you go in there and there's all the food you can think to eat. The food is a bomb.com. Like when I tell you guys, I've never experienced anything like that other than when I went to National Black to their career fair and I went to the Target party. And the Target party was very similar to that. But these product launches were always over the top and just, amazing and at the time when I was in the industry they used to give us gifts 
So you would come back to your room and there'd be gifts on the bed or gifts mailed to your house. You would get spoiled back then. I don't think they do that anymore, but back then you used to really get spoiled. So my experience in the industry was pretty amazing. I loved it, but I do kind of want to share with you guys some things that I think you should take into consideration. And these are kind of like where I said the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? So in the industry, you are looked at as like a necessity to get the samples for for patients who a lot of times don't have insurance or it's a starter so that people can try the product before they're able to fulfill their prescription at the pharmacy. It's really nice for doctors because they like to have those starter packs to give their patients. So when they come and they see you, a lot of times they do it just because they have to do it to get the samples. Most offices don't look at drug reps as a fun person to interact with in their day. Most of them don't like it. So you really have to go above and beyond to make people like you and to make people enjoy when you walk into that office. So if you're not a people person, I would for sure say it's something to think about because to have to be on edge every single day walking into offices with people that you don't work with and that you just interact with once a month can be definitely intimidating for sure. And then they'll have you do things like stand in the corner and you have to stand there with your little notebook, hold your notebook and wait for the doctor to come. And you basically will be like down the hallway and the doctor will do this. You guys, they'll have their pen and they'll be like, basically saying like, do you need a signature? <laughs> And you're like, yes. And oh my goodness, y'all. It was always so embarrassing. I don't know. But it was like part of the beast. You know what I mean? You just had to do it. So there's that. Also, I've had doctors who I tried to detail them on clinical trials or give them new information. And they just went off. Like they were pissed, just went off on me. And I just had to suck it up because at the end of the day, you can't really clap back. Like this is your job. I remember like kind of getting a little bit snippy back with people, but at the same time, I would just suck it up. Like it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? And I get it, but you for sure have to have thick skin because you know it doesn't have anything to do with you. It has everything to do with them and nothing to do with you. <laughs> but I have been cussed out on a few occasions when I was in that industry. The other thing is you'll hear people talk about the gatekeeper, you guys. And the gatekeeper is essentially the nurses or the lady who sits at the front desk. Sometimes it's a guy and you have to be able to win over the gatekeeper so that you can get time with the doctor. When we worked at Pfizer, they had a rule where you had to see the doctor sign for your samples. And I remember there was one office where to get a signature, you had to put your clipboard up on the window and it was like this, this square window. He would come and he'd sign through the window and you literally could see his coat, his name and his hand and that was it. <laughs> I'd have to tell them like, that's not enough because I have to see him sign. I can't just see his hand. Like, how do I know that's really him? You know what I mean? Like you gotta make sure it's really the doctor because these are pharmaceuticals. You know what I'm saying? You can't just let anybody get their hands on them. So that was crazy too. I remember my first dinner. We went out to dinner. I took this office out to dinner, you guys, at this really nice restaurant in Grand Rapids called The Chop House. We went to the chop house, we had the back room, everybody's eating good. I had a, a menu already mapped out for everybody so that we wouldn't go over on my budget. The budget was $125 a person for dinner. And I remember I got my bill and I about freaked out you guys. My bill was like 12 to $1,400. And I remember being like, OMG. I was so scared. I called my teammate after cause I couldn't remember what the dollar amount was supposed to be. And I'm like, is this okay? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, that's okay. That's actually pretty normal. They're like, for that group, you actually did pretty okay. But I will say I've learned my lesson or when I was at least in the industry, I learned my lesson about letting people pick the liquor because a lot of times they'll entertain you just to come out to dinner and then they want to pick their drinks, their liquor, everything that they like, and you would just have to pay for it. So I was, I had to get really bold about making sure I had all that stuff mapped out so that nobody tried to take advantage of me. It was a lot of fun back then, I have to say. Now I will say it's been a while, so I'm not exactly sure if any of these things have changed. Like I'm not even sure if you can still take doctors out to dinner anymore. Before I started, they used to even go golfing and do stuff like that. So I don't know if since I was in the industry, if things have changed from a you know dinner perspective or bringing lunches and all that stuff. But when I used to go, it was a lot of fun. So overall, I will say you guys, I definitely enjoyed the industry. I love the job. 
But the thing that made me want to go back to school to get my MBA is I really was just desiring the next level. And to promote in pharma, you basically had to apply for hospital rep jobs and hope to go from a hospital rep to a district manager. But I really didn't have the desire to promote up in the sales capacity. So I decided to go back to school. I really wanted to learn more about corporate in general and about business and I wanted to do marketing and transition from the sales route and go into the marketing route. And if you guys ever want to talk more about the whole B-School situation or even picking my degree, let me know because I would be open to that conversation too. And I know I can be kind of long-winded sometimes you guys, but I do feel like these conversations are helpful. So yeah, I decided to go back to school and I really wanted to take my career and my income to the next level. After leaving pharma, I was able to increase my salary by almost 30K directly the year after I finished my MBA program. And I think even since then, I probably increased my salary by at least 60, maybe even 70K if I'm counting correctly. But it has been, it was a great progression and that job opened up a lot of doors in the healthcare industry for me. So I do recommend it, especially if you're starting out. Now, one thing I will say is back then, Pfizer really liked people who were fresh out. And what I mean by that is fresh out of undergrad, whereas other companies, they were more open to scooping up people from other companies or other organizations and just didn't really care. You know, I knew a lot of people when I worked at Shearing Plow who came from Enterprise Rental Car. I came from Pfizer, my buddy came from Pfizer. So it just kind of depends on the company what they really like to get. But Pfizer liked to get people fresh out because because they wanted to train them how they wanted to train them. And I do think there was something going on with the whole young and very attractive and just a, a nice mix of attractive people, all different kinds of, you know, attractive looking people. But there was something to be said about how young their sales force was as compared to when I went to Shearing Plow. It was a totally different dynamic for sure. So overall, you guys, in closing, I just have to say pharmaceutical sales is a really great job. It's a really great industry to go into. Definitely for me, helped to jumpstart my career and push me to the next level. And if it's something that you're interested in, I would one recommend you check out my older video where I talk about how to get into pharmaceutical sales. The only thing I will say is back in the day when I did that video, I talked about the certification that you can get online. And I am not exactly sure if that certification is something that's necessary necessary. So take that with a grain of salt at this point because a lot of time has passed and I don't know if that's something that really adds a ton of value. So I just wanted to spike that out, but check that video out. If you guys have questions, comment below and let me know. But with that, I guess I'm done with my face and I'm about to get into my day. So thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye. -bye.